today's video is all about how we can tell how far stars are away from the planet Earth. How we can look at them and we can say that star is 700 million light years away and that star is 20 million and whatever. And obviously this ties into how we age the universe. This topic was actually chosen by another user, this chap who uh, specifically asked me to do it on this topic. Happily for me, and for him I guess, I've already done research on this area, so I was basically just waiting to make a film on this subject anyway. So let's go over what we can actually see with an optical telescope. The answer is very little. We can't even see the centre of our own galaxy with an optical telescope. There's too much space dust in the way. You can, most of the things, if you look up at the stars at night, they're all inside our galaxy generally because we can't actually see out of it. Um, there's a couple of objects we can see outside of it, but really not many. The reason for this is that after a certain distance, our view is obscured by dust, uh, space dust. So, in essence, we can only really see a small number of galaxies um, with the visual eye. After this point, the only thing which gets through the space dust is infrared and microwave radiation, which is obviously a very small uh, section of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum of light. But this is just a discussion of what light we're using. This doesn't really tell us about distance or how far stars are away from us. How do we tell how far a star is away from planet Earth? Well. In the first instance, we use a basic mathematical theorem, which, you know, just can't really be faulted. This is known as stellar parallax, and this is where you look at a star, and you see where, where it is, or seems to be, in terms of position in the sky, and then you move to a different position, and then you see where it is again, and through measuring your movement, you can actually tell how far the stars move by the apparent change in position. This is based on maths, it's all very reliable, I'm not going to challenge it in any way, it's all quite straightforward. But it can only be used for distances which are relatively very, very close to our planet. After this, we're reliant on things called Cepid variables and standard candles. These are a type of star. These types of stars go in cycles of getting brighter and then getting dimmer. And this, the amount of time it takes for them to go through this cycle, is supposedly related to their size. This relation is meant to be um, standard and consistent throughout all the stars, and therefore you can see a star very, very far away, millions, supposedly, of light years away. And then you can look at that star and you can say, right, obviously that's this distance away because it seems, it appears to be very bright and it's got a very long cycle for example and so working it out you can say um, it looks very bright, um, it's very far away therefore it must be a huge distance away. I've made it sound very general but of course there are equations for working all this out so they can give a standard distance for each star assuming it's near one of these standard candles that they can look at. But now of course we get to the problems with this method. There are one or two. The first I'd categorize as possibly quite a small problem. It's simply that because there's so much stellar dust in the in not the atmosphere but in space generally, this can absorb more or less of the light and therefore make it much more difficult to calculate what the actual intensity of the star should be without the light being absorbed by the dust. Then we have problem number two, and this one's quite substantial. The closest seeped variable to Earth is called Polaris. Being the closest seeped variable, obviously it's been studied as much as possible. And what's been found is that the changes in the star are, well, I wouldn't say completely different, but vastly different to what would actually be expected the star has brightened on average by 15%, and yet the period has only increased by 8 seconds per year. This is not what would be expected. 
and also the period of stellar evolution, the way the stars progress and as it gets older, seems to be up to 100 times faster than what would be expected. Now, obviously this means that the things that we can actually see, things that we're close to, and things that can really be studied, are saying something which is completely different to what we'd actually expect. So how can you really depend on the other methods to tell how far a star away is? and as a result of that, how long it would take for the light to get to us.